My name is Anthony Camargo. I'm from Austin, Texas. 1995. Um, I am living in South Beach. Uh, I have a gallery on the infamous Lincoln Road. And I have a client who comes in regularly to buy furniture, one of a kind pieces of art that I'm creating. One day he asked me if I knew who he was. I'm like, well, yeah, I have your credit card receipt, blah, blah, blah. He's like, no, do you know who I am? I'm like, do you want to tell me? And he said, well, my name is Christian Bjorn. And back then, this is 1995, um, Christian Bjorn, if you watch pornography, you knew who Christian Bjorn was because there was Falcon, there was Catalina, but then there was Christian Bjorn. And he said to me, he said, I would like for you to do a film for me. And I was like, uh, no, I don't think so. He was relentless. For a year, he kept after me and kept asking me if I would do it. And finally, one day, he said to me, because let's go to lunch. He said, look, I come in and I buy your work all the time. You're an amazingly talented artist. He goes, can you look at what I do as art? And I was like, oh, wow. That was an interesting perspective for me. I still said no. But he's told me to think about it. I thought about it and I thought, Anthony, you're an artist. How can you make a judgment call on somebody else's form of art unless you know what that art form is? And with that, I made the decision that I was going to do my first porn film. <laughs> I became one of the Christian Bjorn boys, so to speak. And I wasn't a boy at that time. I was already in my 30s. But there's a, there was a status that was attached to that. After three or four films, I ended up doing films for other uh, houses, Catalina, Falcon. In the process, I learned a different take on what the industry was, and I eventually exited. Years later, I moved from uh, South Beach to Manhattan. I met my partner, um, who was a clothing designer for Joan Rivers, uh, and I uh, was going to open up an art gallery in New York, but we quickly realized that that wasn't really realistic. Uh, my partner was from Austin, Texas, so he said, let's move to Austin. He had gone to UT. He loved it here. We actually uh, spent a year just kind of understanding how the city worked. Eventually, it worked in uh, the Dell stock split is what happened. So when the Dell stock split, all of a sudden you had money in Austin. Before that, you didn't, right? It allowed us to start our company. We built a very well-known jewelry brand here in Austin, Texas, um, and it quickly became one of those brands that was synonymous with celebrities. I knew or I really believed at this time in space that I needed to keep my career as an adult film actor on the down low. My fear became that that's gonna come out and it's gonna destroy everything, but we kept growing. We got more accounts, um, our employees, we got more and more employees, and so all of a sudden we had all these people depending upon us. And one day <laughs> I was uh, sitting in Neiman Marcus and the buying office. And the buyer happened to be gay, and he said to me, as across from the desk, he said, I know you. I'm like, no. And I'm in my head going, holy shit. This guy knows something, right? And I pretend like, nothing, like nothing's happening. And then he looks up at me and he says, I watched two of your films last night. Neiman Marcus were in one of the top stores in the world. And we were selling to seven stores at that time. And I thought, this is over. I've now destroyed my, my livelihood, my partner's livelihood, everything. We ended up leaving that day with 13 stores. So what I learned in that lesson was that, yes, it was a safe zone. There was a safe zone. He happened to be gay. Had it been anybody else, I don't know what would have happened. But the favors were on my side. And it didn't have a negative impact on my business. Because once he, he said it, I had to acknowledge it. And once I acknowledge it, it was done. A couple years go by, um, brand gets more and more successful, more and more famous, um, and I just do a five-page spread in People Magazine. Um, I just done the jewelry for the White House for the inauguration. By the way, George Bush found out that I was a porn star and was like, hey, it's okay. It was a wonderful spread, and it spoke about my relationship with the, with the White House, with the Bush family and also some of my personal relationships with some, of, uh, some other celebrities. Um, about a week later, my publicist in New York got a phone call saying that NPR wanted to do an interview. And she said, well, they, came to, they wanted to do something about a, a gay uh, businessman that's successful. I said, when do we do it? And she said, no, no, it's not we, it's you. I said, but this, 
I'm Anthony Neck as a business partnership, my partner. She said, they only want to speak to you. Well, that was a red flag. I knew in my heart of hearts that my adult film career was going to come up. And um, I didn't know really how to handle it. I called this, uh, this friend of mine um, who, who had built a very, uh, probably the biggest career in, in the industry at that time, in the music industry. I'm not going to say her name here. Um, somebody that really was revolutionary, who changed the uh, dynamics of how we looked at things, especially uh, sex. We got on the phone and we were chatting and I told her exactly what was going on. She said, look, I think that's a great opportunity. You can be a voice to be supportive of youth of the LGBT community. I said, but what happens if they bring this question up? And what she said to me was, <clears throat> hit it head on. She said, hit it head on because if you hit it head on, there's nowhere they can go with it. And I took that advice and of course I went and did the NPR interview and it was live. And I was shaking, I remember shaking in my boots, and of course the question came up. And I just smiled, and I said, yeah, I have. I've been an adult in the adult film business. And there was nowhere to go with it. My employees' jobs became very, very secure. Um, my business grew. Um, I became much more confident. I lost my fear. Um, and because of that is why all the positive things started to happen. In order to, be, to succeed in life, in order to move forward in positivity, we have to take ownership over all of our actions. When you own whatever decision that you've made, nobody can weaponize that against you. We can only be our best if we're our best to ourselves. We can only be the best for others if we can truly be authentic and true to ourselves. That's it.